Hello everyone. I hope all of you are having a great time. And to be specific, we have beautiful weather in Delhi after a very long period. So I was out for a few hours in the morning, then came back in the evening. Now let's continue the momentum of past seventeen days and look at today's question. Expression add operators. In this question, we are given a string nums, and we are given three operators: positive, negative, and multiplication. We need to put these operator at intermediary positions in that string, and we need to tell if the updated expression that is generated by dumping positive, negative, or multiplication sign at intermediary positions result in the target value that is also specified in the question. We need to tell how many such unique expressions are possible. For example, we are given nums as one, two, three, the input string, and you are free to put multiplication, positive or negative sign any number of times at intermediary positions in this input string. The only caveat here is if we need to check if that updated expression generates the target number. If it does. Then that becomes our one possibility for the output. As in this case, if we put multiplication signs at intermediary positions, one into two into three results in six. That means it's a valid use case. The other one is one plus two plus three. This also results in six. That becomes a valid use case. Now let's look at the PPT. There are few pointers that are specified in the questions through which we can build our answer. The first one is. We need to return all possibilities that results in the target value. Remember the word "all possibilities." We'll be using this hint to actually decide on our algorithm. Expression add operator lead code two eighty eight. It's a hard question on lead code, but the approach that we will follow is the backtracking approach, and we have solved plenty of questions over the last one year in the past. related to backtracking so the coding should not be very critical for you guys those who have been associated with me how did i conclude we are going to use backtracking because in the question it was specified we need to generate all possibilities so whenever you see the word all possibilities just remember this point one possible solution could be through backtracking and in this case we'll use it so let's try and understand the question once more we are given an input string and we we are given a target value we are also allowed to put positive negative and multiplication sign at any number of times at intermediary positions in this input string and we need to tell those expressions that finally evaluates to the target value for example if you put plus sign here followed by plus sign here it results in the target value 6 If you put multiplication sign here, then again a multiplication sign here, it also results in the target value six. There could be other expressions as well. For example, one, uh, one into two, plus three. That results in five, and you're free to choose any operator for the intermediary position. It's not that you have to use plus at all the places or multiplication at all the places. There is a small trick while generating all possibilities. Let's try to understand those trick. For this, we'll evaluate one plus and negative separately and multiplication separately. Why? Let me just explain that reason to you. Let's assume we are given an expression one, two, three, and four. It really doesn't matter where you are putting the plus sign or the negative sign, because the precedence of plus and Minus sign is least in the board mass operations. Out of the board mass operations, therefore, you want to put it anywhere at any position. It really doesn't matter. It won't impact your answer. However, when it comes to multiplication sign, the game is all different. How? Let's try to evaluate this expression. So, how do you evaluate one plus three into two? You don't do this. Do it this way. So, you you can't. Evaluate ten first and then multiply it with two. That will give you the wrong result. What ideally should be done? It should be done in this way: seven plus. You need to first evaluate this part of the expression, which is six, and the final expression evaluates to thirteen instead of twenty. 
so how do we handle these cases instead of keeping track of the updated result and the expression we need more values to be passed in the recursive tree what are those values let me just explain that to you the first one is the expression itself we need to keep track of what expression that we have built so far the other one is the result that we have calculated so far result calculated so far the other one is the previous value or the previous operation that we just did on what number so previous number operation and how we'll be using this let me just tell you this information so let's assume we have started from 7 and you 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 wanted to build one possibility with plus so you went ahead you did the addition part 7 plus 3 so that gives you 10 the result so far becomes 10 the previous operation uh, on this number you performed it was 3 so the previous number becomes 3 and now you want to perform the operation of multiplication on 2 so how would you do that you will subtract from 10 3 so from the result calculated so far you subtract the previous number and then you do the multiplication thing which is previous number into current number which is 2 this will give you the updated correct result 7 plus 6 that is 30 so remember this expression what we are doing we are updating the result with result calculated so far result calculated so far minus previous number previous number plus current number into previous number this is the updated result of multiplication after performing the multiplication previous calculated result calculated so far minus previous number plus current number into previous number and this will help us calculate the possibilities correctly handling multiplication cases this is the crux of the problem rest everything is a generic backtracking or dfs approach that we usually do be explaining the rest of the things in the coding section because it is, it is pretty straightforward if you know backtracking in general which i have told plenty of times in the past so without much ado let's look at the code here i have defined the answer variable that will help us store all the possibilities for the answer and let's talk about the dfs method that i have defined it takes in five parameters the first one is the, for the index that I am currently at in the string s. The second one is the expression path that I have generated so far. The next one is the result so far that I have calculated. Next ahead is the previous number that I operated on in the coming from the previous operation or iteration. Followed by this we have the input string s and the target that we are trying to search. If my index happens to be equal to length then i check if my result so far happens to be equal to target if that is the case then i add it to the answer and return from there because you can't go beyond the this particular i index and for the rest of the part i start the iteration for generating all the possibilities i have taken an index j which is initialized to the starting index and goes up till the length of the input string the first thing is to check if my current character happens to be zero if that is the case i break it because that simply means a uh, skip leading zero number there was a zero at the intermediary position and we need to skip that position because the zero will be unimportant in the operation followed by this i go and calculate the current number that that is generated out of the substring starting from i goes up till j plus 1 once i have current number i go and check if my i index happens to be equal to 0 that means i am starting the operation i invoke the dfs operation on j plus 1 
I update the path to path plus current number. The result so far becomes equal to current number. This is the base case and the previous number that I have operated on happens to be equal to the current number itself followed by S and T, S and target. For the base case, we make the first number pick without any operator adding to it. And for the rest of the cases, we have invoked a DFS method thrice. One for the plus sign, you add path plus current number. You update the result so far with current number and you pass in the current number, which will act as a previous number for the next operation in the iteration tree, followed by S and target. Similarly, for the negative sign as well, the positive sign gets replaced by negative sign because that's a subtraction case. And the third case is the trickiest case. Here you pass in the DFS method uh, and you pass multiplication sign. And this is the updated expression that will give us the result. Result so far minus previous number plus previous number into current number. And for the next iteration, uh, the previous number becomes previous number into current number followed by S and target. Let's try this up. Accepted. This brings me to the end of today's session. If you liked it, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from Coding Decoded. And I genuinely hope you have seen the other video that I published in the last week. It's about a journey of a guy from a tier 3 college to Morgan Stanley. It's okay to miss out on few questions, but that advice is absolutely untainted, genuine and the bottom from the bottom of his heart. You will love the conversation that we had. So I would request you guys to go and check out that video. It has million dollar wisdom in it.